Hello, <clears throat> this is me, Ben Alameda, again, and today we'll talk about street engines. Let's get off a little bit on the racing stuff, and I know a lot of you are really, uh, most actually, are into the street uh, engine performance and uh, with occasional racing, as I think the majority of, uh, of people watching magazines or performance-oriented uh, shows on TV. But anyway, today we'll talk about how much compression can you run on the street. Not that long ago, I came up to uh, somebody in one of those uh, cars and coffee, and this gentleman had a very beautiful, um, looked like a uh, perhaps a Factory 5 <clears throat> AC Cobra. And I said to him, beautiful, beautiful build. And I looked at his car because the other ones were 82 base and he has had a 408, 351 stroker. And I said, uh, what do you have here? I said, that's a 408. You know, uh, tell me about what you have. He goes, oh, I got TFS heads and Holly intake, you know, 750 double pumper on a five speed. Oh, nice. And I go, so, uh, I mean, how big a cab? He goes, oh, 560. 570 on the exhaust, so I go, oh, excellent. How, how about your compression ratio? He says, oh, 9 to 1. And that's why, oh, 9 to 1, how come so so low? He says, well, because of pump gas. I go, well, pump gas, 9 to 1. I said, you're giving away a lot of power. Oh, what do you mean? I go, well, you know, you should have built this with 11, 11 and a half to 1. You're giving away... 80, 100 horsepower on the get-go, two and a half points below what's ideal. I said, I usually build my engines with 11 to 1 on the street. 11 and a half, oh, no, no, no way, that, that won't get away. I said, well, tell me about your car. Do you hear it detonate? He goes, no, it doesn't. And his buddy's listening to the side. I go, yeah, because, you know, you have it locked down, what, 34 degrees? He goes, yeah, 34 degrees, you know, something like that. And um, yeah, I won't detonate. Uh, I said, I bet you a lot that if you had 11 to 1, 11 and a half to 1, it still won't detonate. How can that be? I go, well, your car is like a, uh, a skateboard with, a, with an engine in it. <laughs> How much do you weigh? He goes, 23.50. I go, that is light. I said, if this engine was in a Galaxy station wagon or if you have a small block Chevy, it's in a Chevelle, you know, 70, 72. Yeah. You could possibly, possibly detonate. And I go, there's no way. This engine, I mean, your car is light. There's no way. It doesn't see the load. You know, if you're going uphill, that's like weight on a car. And you go, okay. That's detonation. Um, because there's a load factor. And what you got to realize is that on the street, all these guys, a lot of them are building... Fox body Mustang with two JZs or or an LS or a big block Chevy, small block Ford, big block Ford. They're light. You know, they got fiberglass hood, uh, Lexan windows running on the street. And when, when you close the door, it goes ding, <laughs> like a speaker box. These things probably don't weigh more than 2750. I've seen them as light as 2450, 2500 on the street. How are you going to detonate with a big block Chevy or Ford in your in your 2,500 pound Mustang? There's no way. So anyway, what we'll talk about is compression and weight of vehicle on the street. You can get away with higher compression with a light car. And his friend said, oh, what about when you shut it off, it runs on. I said, is that your problem with your car? He said, I've seen it happen a lot. I said, well, simple. If you got too much initial timing in it, it will probably run on, but it's what you do. If it's an automatic, leave it in drive, shut the engine off. It will run on. Now, sometimes you sh shut it off on neutral, it goes, <laughs> it keeps running on. Leave it in drive, and then it goes, well, what about if it's a stick shift? You can't, you have no drive. I said, well, easy. Shut off the ignition and leave it first gear, shut the ignition off, let off the clutch. No run on, okay? So that pretty much settled the issue. Uh, okay, coming back to this, it's very important that you look at the weight of the car. Come on, you tell me. If you have a four, you have a 408, 
that is going to detonate. I won't even detonate on a regular uh, early, early generation Mustangs. You get away with it. Okay, so, uh, uh, and I see all these kits, and some of them have the wrong piston configuration. Nine and a half to one, nine, oh, I go, wow. In actuality, a lot of them are even less than that, because some of these budget kits, beware about those, they're sitting below deck. The deck of the block, sitting below deck. I've seen them 10, 20, as, high, as low as 30 thousands down the hole. And then you put a thick head gasket, and then you think you got compression, you have a lot less than that. Wow. Anyway, so uh, now the heads are you going to buy. This new heads from TFS, you know, uh, Brodex, Holly, or AFR. They got a pretty good swirl and tumble um, capability in it. They're all different. Okay, some are a little bit better than others, but at least they have them. The guys that designed them, um, I know some of them, and they take that into account. Any kind of mixture motion, be it tumble or swirl, and then you deal with compression, you got it made. All right? It's when you don't, you're lacking one of those mixture motions, then your, your area around here in the combustion chamber, they're like spread out, rich, lean, uh, eddy currents and all that, you can have problems, okay? Now, must have a quench design. The reason for the quench, okay? There's a quench right there, right there. Is that when the piston comes up, you, your ideal number is here is between 38 to no more than 46 to 48. Anything larger than that, it, the, the mixture doesn't get slapped. And when it gets slapped by the proximity of the piston, flat top of the head on this area of the quench, what it does is it shoots some of the dead dormant mixture over here, the rich and lean areas here, the super rich around here, into the center of the chamber and spins them. Either they collide this way, go over or under. It depends. We never know, but it does happen. Now, some heads only have one quench chamber and hardly anything here. GT40 uh, uh, cast iron heads have that situation. I think even the, the GT40X um, has that issue, but it's better than nothing. Okay? Now, on an open chamber head, which is here, you don't have any quench. Right? Here, when the piston comes up, it slaps it, the, the, the mixture collides here, right in the, the opening, and spins it, all right? Either this way or this way, whichever. They collide and they spread all the, the air and fuel molecules to a finer mist and better for uh, ignition purposes. Over here, none. Actually, that's an open chamber head. So you go from an open chamber head or a dish piston, like this one here. Okay, that's a dish piston. What it does is, once the in intake valve closes, piston is coming up. Here, you have that slapping motion. Here, since the flat top, like this one here, covers that red area there and introduces the slapping motion of compression and it steers the air fuel. Here it doesn't do that, okay? Because what happens, you only have this, this area that's flat that contacts the quench side. What actually happens here is, is this. You think you're getting any slapping motion there? Okay? So when you have a street car with no quench, Cleveland two barrel heads, open chamber, some of the Chrysler small block, open chamber. I said, I think it's almost all of them. Uh, the A motors, they don't have that. So you have this, this push. How are you gonna slap that, that mixture and get them stirred up? It's not gonna happen, no matter how hard you try. So that's what we're confronted with. Now, I've come across people that had their engines built or built themselves. They go, yeah, I bought a, uh, a stroker kit and I use the AFR because it's got 
an excellent combustion chamber or a TFS. The combustion chamber is good. It's got swirl and so forth and so on. Oh, okay. I said, let me look at your pieces that you use. They show me their build sheet. And it has one of these. When you have a dish, this is ineffective. The only way that's going to happen, if it gets slapped hard by a flat top piston to initiate that last mixture uh, motion before it ignites, and you're going to have good combustion, you're going to have a responsive engine. If you use the wrong piston, and I see a lot of kits out there, Ford Stroker especially, this is the I think is dished. Some have a D shape. Well, not more like this. That's not bad, but the contact is at a bare minimum, not enough. Now, on the page of this video is a picture of a piston with a perfectly uh, quench application that I have on an engine. You see the shadowing on top of the piston. You can even see the the shape of the combustion chamber on the top of the piston here. It shadows it. Not the point that it's contacting, but every time you get it close, the quench is tight. There's no carbon buildup. If the quench is not, oh God, larger than 46, 48, you're gonna have lots of carbon build, carbon buildup there. And what happens, they glow. And they start a, uh, and when they glow, you should have, you can have pre-ignition, so far so on, and uh, there's nothing worse than uh, carbon buildup on the engine. Now, uh, so beware that you have the right piston application because if you use a dish piston, I don't care if you have a Yates cylinder head you're running on the street, that combustion chamber is nullified. It does not work as intended. It has to have some contact here, not contact, but close proximity in order for that to have this interaction. Okay, so think about that. Always look at your piston when you're getting a stroker kit. Did the guy give me, oh, you know, not only that, you're already 9 to 1. Okay? You're already 9 to 1. And then you put a dish pistons in there. So you lost a combustion chamber. And you have less horsepower. What is your true losses? Probably way big. I know one guy, I did a uh, AC Cobra for a friend of mine. And he raised his buddy with a 408, and he's got a 347. It was not even close. That 408 spun the tire because it got stroke cubic inches. But as soon as they got moving, the 347 pulled away. It was not even close. It's, it's kind of like sickening to watch. Because he thought he was going to wax my buddy Luke with his 408 AC Cobra. Oh my God, it didn't happen. Because he did not have the quench. He had a dish piston, so he lost his combustion chamber and he lost his compression. I don't care if you're, if you got 50, 60 cubic inches on the guy, he's gonna spank you. Okay, so uh, match the cylinder flow to cubic inch. Like anything, for racing, you gotta match the, the intake port volume for the intended RPM and cubic inches. Same thing on the street. Do not forget that very, very simple uh, formula you got to match the head configuration to the intended usage. You don't put a big port on a low RPM RV motor, <laughs> okay, or a four-wheel drive. It doesn't work that way. Match it up. Now, stroke crank close to the maximum allowable. Why do I say that? The reason is when you have cubic inches, the engine works a lot less harder especially on the street. Remember on the street, torque is king. Racetrack, RPM is king. On the street, you have uh, less tendency to detonate with a big cubic inch. Again, even with a stroker, make sure if you have, if you have to run a dish that, and I usually have this done with uh, the piston manufacturers out there, Ross in particular, I get the, the profile of the combustion chamber and I apply that to the piston. I want to retain that. So Ross would, would gladly build me a, uh, a piston deck area here matching my 
my quench chamber there, okay, or squish, whatever that. And they, and you can see the combustion chamber shape. In fact, on the cover picture for this video, that's exactly what you're looking at. Now, I see people say, "Oh, I struck mine at 377." I go, "Huh? Why did you go half a step on the street? Torque is king. Cubic edge is king. Why 377? You already changed cranks, or you already grounded yours." But cranks are so cheap today, a cast crank will probably be better than the factory crank that's been regrounded or uh, stroked to 377. So, why did you take a half step? You're already changing cranks or machining the crank. You're changing the rods and definitely you're changing pistons. Why did you go to half a step? In fact, to me, 4.8 is great. I'm not knocking that. But like I said on the street, I run a 4.100 stroke minimum or 417 uh, 750 okay 4170 uh i tell you there's a big difference in pulling power now you stack your compression your 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 quench with a long stroke motor yeah think about it you can even put a 4250 stroke on a stock factory two bolt main block no problem some people say oh uh, uh, it's impossible it won't fit now, have you tried it? Oh, but that's what I heard. Yeah, that's what I heard too. So I tried it. It works. 4250 stroke. Now, uh, one thing with a Ford small block Chevy, Mopar, everything on a small inch bore, on a four inch bore, the stroke is the cubic inch. Chevy, four inch bore, small block, 348 stroke, 350. Ford, four inch bore, Three and a half inch stroke, 351. Give or take one or two cubic inches. Now, 347, 3400 stroke, 340, four inch bore. Now, they're all three, uh, 30 cubic inches. I mean, 30 over. 3400 plus four inch, 30 over. 30 over, you double the three. Now it's six, six cubic inches. Now, when you look at three, uh, 347 stroke, 3400 stroke, okay, four. Point 30 over is 347. 331, 325 stroke, 325 cubic inches, plus 30 over, six more inches. 325 plus six is 331. Something to think about, okay? Always add that, uh, double that number, okay? Uh, for, the for the board diameter on a four inch board, your stroke is the cubic inch. Anyway, uh love that's the thing now one thing also that you got to realize with the quench that's hardly talked about okay the fact of the matter is on an open chamber head the active when the air fuel comes in it rotates or whichever way or tumbles usually the spark plug is sunken in a little bit and guess what happens there's an accumulation of over rich condition right about there right about here here nothing happens because you got a dish or open chamber nothing happens here when that happens it blows everything together here and all the rich lean area well rich area here gets stirred up and gets blown out of there and you have a nice clean spark think about that Bob Glidden years ago his boss 49 will leave the line softer than the rest of them he knows he's got bigger pores got got a lot more top end but it's always his et's not there because the car wants 60 foot what he found out was he had a lot of wetting around the spark plug area so he had to fix his quench and got him tighter and everything to the point that he's getting slapped and a lot of the wetting issues here on the boss 429 is gone fixed it now his car is 60 foot it's our winning races again okay so uh that is important now uh, also, I'm running out of time here. Got to keep it within half an hour. Let me touch on this a little later on, but for now. The big block Chevrolet, like I said, on the street, you have swirl, tumble, all that stuff. The approach angle of the port comes into play too, okay? On the big block Chevy, you have the inside port coming in and hitting the, the quench area of the piston and swirls this way and then goes in and out to the exhaust that has a different mixture motion quality in there. That will require a different timing 
as opposed to the outside port. You come in here and straight to the exhaust. You hardly have any kind of swirl action here. See, you have two different paths coming in. One is coming in directly to the chamber, quench area. The other one slides in to the exhaust valve. This would probably have more of a swirl. It probably won't deplete as much, and this one would. This one probably recover. Even though it's flowing less, I gotta check my notes. One of them is not flowing correctly, but I bet you uh, port recovery comes into play. Where the other ones are depleted more, it takes a longer time to, to, to fill up and recover. And really, when you look at both capacity of delivering air fuel, probably ends up being the same. Now, that being said, doesn't mean two uh, uh, unequal ports are, are not good. It has some benefits because the longer port, whichever one's longer, would peak lower, okay? And not only that, the shorter port will peak higher on the horsepower equation. This one will peak lower on the torque application. So really, you have one engine, two different scenarios. Four has a left port, four has the right port. They both peak at a different time. So instead of having on the typical LS, Ford, you know, intake peripheral ports, everybody come in and maybe a little angle here, or a little angle there, into the chamber, to the exhaust, or maybe uh, hitting just like here, hitting the combustion chamber. But at least all eight pretty much are doing the same thing. Not here. Okay? All eight will pretty much peak at the same time. So you, you, your dynograph will go like this. Peak once before it comes down and the horsepower takes over. Here, you have one peak for the other four that's lower in the RPM, and then the other one peaks at a higher <laughs> RPM, the shorter one. Okay? So you have this broader thing. So just because you have two unequal port, you know, left and right side port, eh, I don't agree with it because, you know, except now today with advancements, you know, you can time them all differently, cylinder to cylinder. But at that time, that's why you see the big block Chevrolet evolved from a left and right side port to a single rifle port, straight on angle, like the Fords and the, the Chryslers and everything. Okay, uh, they did not do that uh, uh, twisted up port. I think that was a big drawback for pro stock for the big block Chevy. Granted, it's very impressive. It has its uh, pluses and everything because of this scenario right here. Uh, you should have four timing tables and four other timing tables for the other configuration of the port. Anyway, I think that's uh, that's uh, oh, a little short story before I run out of time. When I was told, I had a ranchero then. I had a four, four barrel head in there, closed chamber, and the compression ratio is 10, seven, five to one. Okay, and I'm pulling my trend. I said, oh, okay, I need a little better gas, gas mounted. So I ended up with uh, smaller two barrel ports. But with a two barrel port is an open chamber head. Would you believe going up the grapevine coming in from Bakersfield, I started detonating like mad. I go, okay, I had 10 and a half, 10, seven, five, and now I have, 8.8 eight roughly, and I'm getting any worse. Because one of the functions of the quench, when it squashes and mixes everything up here, you have a more instantaneous and a more effective burn. Over here, you don't have much of that mixing. You have rich or rich here, lean here, a lot of uneven because you didn't, you didn't slap it. You, have, you, were, you were having this issue. And guess what happens there? How should I say this? The quench's purpose is when you ignite the ignition, it goes this way towards the exhaust. When it sees that wall, okay, the spark plug is here, which is that wall, the sound wave goes from uh, uh, burn and speeds up to an explosion. That's a fact. It's under a lot of pressure, temperature, and what happens there is that when it speeds up, then it goes supersonic, it starts to burn or explode, really. Then the, the pinging you hear is actually sonic waves hitting one wall to the next, bouncing back and forth. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, so, oh man, one time, three more minutes. So 
this is the the issue here just because it's hard compression doesn't mean it's gonna detonate that has a tendency to stop the rapid acceleration of the ignition kernel from a small light to a fast burn and before it accelerates an explosion it hits this dam you don't have that here in the open chamber that's why sometimes even though you're lower compression doesn't mean you're not going to have detonation you might actually end up with more detonation just like quench is like the furniture in this room when i go like this it doesn't echo furnitures act like quench things the sound wave hits the table the the other sofas here and stops the the sound from taking off speed of sound is about 680 750 miles an hour. depends on temperature and altitude now when you take off all the furniture here it's wide open the room's wide open like it is here when you go like this guess what you hear the echo okay sound waves same thing here so think about that this is like a room full of furniture that doesn't have any okay so i wish uh, i'm just running out of time here so please subscribe so i can keep this going and we'll touch more on, on combustion chamber next uh to break away from the, my usual intake port uh, segment so please uh, subscribe to ben alameda racing and we'll keep this going okay thank you very much guys take care bye, -bye.